Today on Network Special, we talk about Duel, a thrilling made-for-TV movie that premiered no- November 13th, 1971. <laughs> I could say it again. I'm not going to. This is my third time trying to get this information out of my face. <laughs> Why talk about Duel? Well, it's a fantastic made-for-TV movie and also the directorial debut of the feature-length presentation of Stevie Spielberg. Mm -hmm. I'm one of your hosts, Zachariah Durr. I'm here with Mike Shear. That's Nathan (laughs) Shear. And then in the booth is Jeremy Demery. Now, Jeremy, say your name again. Jeremy Demery. There he Mm. is. That's what he sounds like. What's your name, sir? David Mann. How do you spell that, please? M-A-N-N. That's two N's. I'd like to report a truck driver that's been endangering my life. David Mann. We're talking duel, everyone. And when Nathan first proposed that we watch this, my first thought was, isn't that a little too good for our show? Because... When you got Stevie Spielberg on your side, you're talking quality. Had you seen this before, no. Nathan? <clears throat> no, but this no. We have to have some good stuff on this show. I agree. So that we don't just quit and cancel immediately because we're just so drained. Sure, it's just this is probably is this the best TV movie that you've seen? No, it's not the best TV movie I've seen, but it is. Um, very uh, exciting. What's the best made-for-TV movie you've seen? The best made-for-TV movie that I have seen is probably um, The Loneliest Runner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I can't say that this... Okay, you're going you're gonna to ask me to go down a big, long list of what's... I mean, I like Bad Ronald a lot. That's one of my favorites. Bad Ronald is a better movie than this. I don't think it's better than this. Uh (laughs) It's definitely not technically better for sure. Sure. Um, But I enjoyed that movie a lot. I've watched it a lot. Yeah, I didn't say I didn't enjoy any other ones. I'm saying this is probably (laughs) as a TV movie. Yes, this is about as good as you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's been some movie in in recent times that is just as good. But this one is great. It's got great quality. And um, it makes sense that because it's directed by this freaking guy who is insane. Like I told you, going through his Wikipedia, it's overwhelming. Like the amount of good stuff that this guy has done from project to project to project to project. It's like he doesn't. I mean, everyone has bad days, but <laughs> but I feel like he's like nailed it so many times. Yeah, Spielberg. I mean, he'll he'll make some 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 dry farts occasionally, but yeah. he bounces but they're back. Wet ones. Yeah, they're they mostly, mostly old wet sloppers. Ones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that he? Who is the most prolific? Like the like who is the most? Who's the best director who's, who's, who has made the most good movies? Of all time or right now? I mean, just of all time. Like, like, like I feel like, well, it's too hard. There's a lot of people now who have made good stuff. But I mean, like, like all of his TV, all of his, like, everything that he does, like. Yeah. Golden Touch. Yeah, so even even the bad stuff still has its moments. But like what I'm saying is like, can you think of someone who has been as uh who has hit a home run as much as he has? The sheer width and breadth of his influence, I don't know if it's ever been matched or that it'll get matched again because he he right? came up in a time when you were talking about new Hollywood directors and you're talking about more of uh, the auteur making movies and the end of the studio system. And one of the biggest times, one of the biggest eras for movies in seventies, eighties and nineties movies were just the biggest (laughs) money makers. It was some of the biggest influence. Uh, You still had to go to the movies. It was pre, you know, video game era as we now know it where video games now are the most profitable form of entertainment and arguably 
as influential, but Spielberg was just such a tone setter. And like you said, he just has so many iconic hits. It's not like he has one thing and he's dining out on it for the rest of his life. I mean, you could talk about maybe Scorsese has as many movies that are really quality. And he also has influenced a lot. Michael Mann, you could say the same thing, but that's very different and it's much more niche. Like, and and it's just in movies like like Spielberg is like touched like every medium. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah. And like his cartoons are great. His TV shows are great. His miniseries, his TV movies, his actual movies like he's done video games. I, I don't remember if they're good or not, but uh, oh, are you kidding? He, uh, Steven Spielberg, CD-ROM, you, you are the director. <laughs> 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 he uh he one time cut in line in front of me to play Super Mario Galaxy before anyone else. Is that a true story? That is a true story. <laughs> yeah. When was that? I was at E. Th- I was at E. Three, the year they uh, 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 announced. You know, n- not announced, but released the Wii. And uh, yeah, he was being taken around to all the stations, and <laughs> they cut in front of us. <laughs> Did he cut in front of you right as you were about to go up? He pulled the controllers from my hand <laughs> and smacked me with them like a lightsaber. And then he said, I directed Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said. <laughs> Excuse me, kid. Did you direct Jurassic Park? <laughs> I didn't think so. <clears throat> now let me play Mario Galaxy. Uh... Yeah, he was 24 when he directed this, which it's young now, but especially in 1971 when a director of a movie was still thought of as, you know, a portly 65-year-old cigar chomping guy <laughs> on a studio chair high in the air. Uh <laughs> it's a just a new face in town and it, it was just inexplicable inexplic- it was it was um it was just people just viewed him as a, as a baby, basically, and they couldn't believe that he directed this. There's a, um, a, a, a quote from when he is asked to direct an episode of Ro- Night Gallery. Mm-hmm. One this of the is actresses before in the episode. Yeah. One of the actresses in the episode is like horrified that they're letting this little kid <laughs> you know, direct this stuff. Um, and, but then she gives a nice quote later on. I don't know if she's being truthful. I think she's like in hindsight thinking. Oh man, this guy was good, <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> but yeah, this is so. This is his first. They're like, "Hey, do you want to try? Give a? Do you want to do this movie?" He says yes, and here we are to duel, which is like you said, really great. It's really great, and it's written What's by this? Richard yeah. Matheson, who also wrote Trilogy of Terror mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. I Am Legend, and uh, mm-hmm. what's his other big? Other so big hit. I don't know. Uh, he, he also wrote all of the Tarantino <laughs> movies. Right. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> he wrote the classic episodes of Twilight Zone. That's his other big claim okay. to fame. Okay. So this movie is of extremely simple concept. You have a guy who is uh, driving to a business meeting. And yeah. he's driving through the California desert as he's driving. He's a salesman. A, a giant dirty, terrifying-looking fuel truck Mm -hmm. pulls up behind him and is tailgating. The guy goes around him, and this makes the truck (laughs) try to kill him (laughs) for the rest of the movie. We never see the driver. It's just this massive cat-and-mouse game with this truck driver attempting to run this guy off the road or or hit him or uh, in any way kill this guy um he's all he's like kind of playing with him and he's kind of trying to murder him uh it's uh, that's it that's the whole plot of the movie and it yeah. should be insufferable and boring because you're in a endless dry desert road just watching people drive around most of the time yeah and 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 just a guy getting george zimmerman <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it was uh, based Richard Matheson said it happened to him at least in a sense that there was a truck who was following him and so he wrote the movie like based on this experience he had while he was in traffic yeah and it made me realize man 
movies, more movies should be about you just almost being hit while driving. Because if you've ever had it happen to you, there's nothing scarier or more infuriating after you are not hit. Um, so yeah. it, and it makes your yeah. your your temper rise and your uh, uh, neuroses kick up. It's a great it's a great movie. Can you think of another movie where there's a machine or something that is trying to kill someone? There's a lot of and, Stephen King movies like that. I mean, there's Christine but, about the demon car or Maximum Overdrive yeah. about the demon truck. <laughs> this really did remind me of a Stephen yeah. King short story. And it's very yeah. surprising that Spielberg has never made or produced anything by Stephen King. Unless... Oh, that's really surprising. He just goes, well, that guy's sort of cursed in terms of getting anything... Well, I guess that curse is kind of lifted by now. With the exception of The Shining, people have always said there's never been a truly great Stephen King movie. I mean, you don't think the It uh, TV series, which we should ha- we should do, right? We should definitely do it. When people you don't think that was good? N- I think when we'll, we'll talk about it when the time comes, but I think yeah. when people remember it, they think about how good Tim Curry is. And Tim yeah. Curry is maybe 10% of that long show and the other stuff, especially the stuff with the adults is pretty rough going. Yeah. Harry Anderson Uh, at his quippiest. You're right. I've been going through, uh, Stephen King shows and movies and, Oh, gosh, it is a real drag. It is a real drag. They're most, most of them are like movies released on USA network yeah some of them are are fun <laughs> but i wouldn't call any of them great movies you yeah. know what i mean like maximum overdrive is fun but it's not anything but if you were steven spielberg wouldn't you want to be like i'll make the first great one you know or whatever i'll make the second great one or whatever i would i would think but maybe i i, I don't know i don't know what's wrong with this guy i don't does he want to make a name for <laughs> does, himself doesn't he want to work you know, I, I read this story about Stephen King that if you are a student and you want to make a student film, he will option the rights to any of his stuff for a dollar for you. Really? Yeah. So there's all these student films based on Stephen King's stories. Wow. I've there's never one, heard uh, that. Based on, yeah. I, 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 there's one based on Lawnmower Man. I have that one on. Uh, I watched that one. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're not... Obviously, they're not great. They're student sure. films. But yeah, I read that in his, uh, when I was going through trying to find a list of all the things that they've created for him. Is there a website or a channel where it's just all of those movies uploaded to one place or collections of them? Yeah, it's called My Plex. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the student movies? No, I, I no I look no though they're only o- online if one of the kids posted it you know one okay of the but students nobody posted has it. taken it upon themselves to curate them all to one place and you can watch I like, don't think yeah I don't think there's even an access I don't I don't think people have uploaded their stuff that way that's too bad I want to see a bunch yeah. of weird like Rushmore school play versions of Lawnmower Man <laughs> I don't even know if there's a list a full list of student f- films that have optioned it. Sounds like you have a new website to build. Yeah, but I saw a list. You know, I don't remember if it was like a, if it was just a blurb on the Wikipedia or not. Anyways, so dual, dual. So, um, can do you want to take a guess at what uh, product this guy sells? Oh, I don't know, machine parts. <laughs> machine parts. This this guy is driving for what feels like days in the <laughs> desert, in the mountains. To talk to one client, where does this client, where is his business? Uh, I think he says he has to like go to the city. I'm assuming he's driving to LA to meet this guy from the suburbs to LA. Okay. And he's driving through the mountains, through Bakersfield, through Um, Pasadena, you know, or whatever. I mean, if you live in Vegas, it's not out of the question to drive to California oh, you, for you business. you think he lives in Vegas? Some some place like that, like a suburb outside. He's going through those tunnels that are in the Back to the Future movies, and he's doing all that kind of stuff. I love... Uh, we talked a little bit about this in the Hollywood Dog 
episode, but I love movie sceneries uh, based around uh, like gas stations that have one customer a year. You know? <laughs> yeah, if you're a fan of old technology, I maybe can't think of a better movie because you're in an old car with an old truck following him and then you got pay phones. Uh, you've mm-hmm. got uh, 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 full service gas stations where mm-hmm. they fill up gas with ethyl. Yeah. <laughs> um, they check your they check under the hood for you. Yeah. Um, God, what a what a bygone era style movie. And yes, a lot of dusty gas stations with like mm-hmm. rattlesnakes in a cage. <laughs> yeah, that that to me was like I couldn't figure out. There's a scene where he is being he, he pulls off into a gas station to um, get away from the truck, and it's a gas station that also doubles as a uh, like a snakeatorium or something like yeah like a, a like, place where you can see snakes and also like there's like an old like um, medicine man. Uh, booth there, you know, like in the background. Yeah, which those are oh. real things in the in the yeah. West. That is a thing. Like you can pay a dollar and see the snakes. Right. You're right. You know, I guess that's true too. Especially along those highways back in the day, where people were just going, like in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, when they go to the big dinosaur park or whatever. Should we should we get into the plot of this movie because there really isn't much of one uh beyond no, the this guys truck is trying to run him over <laughs> yeah and it's I, I i will say uh there there are times in the movie where i'm like um and maybe this okay so maybe maybe this is because we saw i know the version that we saw is is the theater version because we couldn't find the TV cut, which was the initial, initially it was put on TV, and then it was uh, liked so well by the the the, crea- the the studio or whatever that they decided to release it in Europe as a movie. So they had him film extra stuff, and so that's the version we're watching, which is like an hour and a half. I'm assuming the original movie was an hour, probably. Original version was 74 minutes. The theatrical is 90 minutes. Okay. Um, See, I, I, I'm, I know I which would, scenes were added. You do? Yeah, I do. Um, and okay. it, uh, thinking about it in my head and kind of editing it in my head, there is one scene basically where he is not just on the road driving away from the truck. The scenes that were added were when he's at the gas station and he calls his wife. The call to the yep. wife was added. Okay. The kids in the school bus that are broken down, that was added. Okay. And then there's just a couple other, you know, driving sequences that were tacked on. So if you take those away, except for the diner, everything else, the diner and the gas station, everything else is, is just driving around trying to avoid this truck. So, okay. So I, I like the school bus scene and I don't care about the phone call as much. I mean, it's you know you just hear more of the the wife and husband hating each other, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But like, so I guess, but I still feel like you could tell that it was longer than it originally was. You know, I guess I like to think of it as as a, the shorter movie, just because it would be so much more tense. Yeah, I would this, rather see it. Yeah, that there's way. no time to breathe. Yeah, because it is it is really like just think about um a time where you were being chased by a bully or something. Uh but you're in a car <laughs> that you've paid a lot of money for and you're just and you're and it's, instead of someone just punching you, they're going to run you off the road or kill you, run into you. Like this guy like at one point he's like like just driving in a circle and circling back to try to hit him directly with the truck. This truck uh, that they selected, I guess Spielberg asked for a bunch of different trucks for him to pick from. The truck is from 1955. It looks like a World War II tank with a fuel truck attached to it. 
It looks like Mad Max to me. Yeah, it's like huge. It, it looks that menacing. Yeah. And it says, fl- by the way, it says flammable all over it yeah. in massive letters. Mm-hmm. And you will you you see it the entire time that you know that this truck is flammable. <laughs> okay, just so you know that. Just keep that in mind that when we get to the end. Uh and on the front bumper are all the different license plates. From yeah. different states from that people you people he's killed. Yes, from, you would kind of <laughs> assume. Assuming. Wait, it could mean that this truck is. I, there's a lot of different ways you could take it. Is, is it that this truck isn't real and this is him kind of going crazy, or is this some sort of mystery truck, or is this guy a, a, a sociopath who is murdering people and taking their license plates and sticking them on his truck? Right, like a stamp. Like he's like a oh, stamps. He like he hits a guy and then he like stamps a dead guy on the side of his right. truck, <laughs> like Be- a Looney Tunes. Because there's also things that don't make like logical sense in terms of how the truck can suddenly turn up places. But oh, I, this I truck like that. Can turn on a dime, by yeah. the way. Yes, it's a really <laughs> good driver. A U- he can do a U turn in a one lane road. <laughs> Let's see. The the movie is uh, uh, sweaty. Yes. It's a really hot looking movie. <laughs> it is a red yes. car and a rust colored truck in the hot desert on the asphalt. Mm-hmm. Um, and With the, lots of weirdos just standing around staring. Yeah, because the one time that the, the trucker runs the guy off the road and into a fence, he winds up on the other side of a diner which is a real diner which is still standing in operation today right? yes and i have to go to this diner because it yes. looks amazing chuck's diner this crazy fake looking place that looks like it's been there since the 20s um and when you go when he went inside i was like man th- spielberg is he's always been good at capturing people but especially in the 70s and 80s he was great at nailing everyday people in a way that I, I think he's still great now, but he's been away from everyday life for so <laughs> long. You can't begrudge the guy. And also this is like young Spielberg and young Spielberg was really like, um, he had like a, a violent streak to him. Cause this old, well, is this part of the new Hollywood, like yeah. auteur kind of thing? Yeah. He's part of that circle. So for sure, he's, He's just as down in the dirt as the rest of these guys are, at least, uh, you know, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. Because when he goes into this diner, um, it's that I was like, man, this is so accurate. Everybody there has a cowboy hat. Mm, Everybody boots. there, yes, looks like they're in a chewing tobacco ad. But mm-hmm. n- it's so accurate in the fact that everyone is polite but rude to this guy at the same time just in the way I'm treated in every truck stop I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah. um, like like people will call you Han or, or you know, just not talk to you, but they also clearly hate your guts. <laughs> yeah. Han or gay. Yeah, or... Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this guy is going crazy. He sees the, the truck reappears outside the diner and he thinks that one of the people in the diner is the truck driver and he's trying to size everyone up. He's, he's seen yeah. the driver's shoes before everybody there is wearing cowboy boots. So it's not helping. And he finally, he comes up to one guy. He thinks he's got it down and it just sounds like a crazy person saying, Hey, cut it out. Stop trying to murder me. And the guy goes, you yeah. need help. <laughs> he smacks the hamburger out of the guy's hand and the guy gets up and punches him twice it's a pretty realistic fight just in the fact that it's really sloppy and fast yeah. and the diner the head of the diner goes up and he goes hey okay okay man cool down cool down you hit him twice we're good we're good <laughs> and then he goes up to the guy who just got beat up and he goes uh why don't you get out of here yeah. and i was like wow that is the real world version of what would happen in most movies it'd be hey are you okay or hey what are you doing starting a fight in my place in real life they would just go you need to leave. (laughs) I don't care what's happening. (laughs) And everyone's like, this is a diner and he's eating, like he orders a cheese sandwich. Can we talk about this? Swiss cheese on rye and he spells rye. Wait, 
<laughs> yeah, which is I, I mean, that supposed to be condescending when he yeah. spells rye. If you know, ordered a cheese sandwich, what would you assume was going to Jeremy? If you ordered a cheese sandwich in a restaurant, <laughs> what would you assume you were getting? A grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. Right? Yes. Here's what he gets: cold cheese with mm-hmm. lettuce and tomato on cold, untoasted rye bread. <laughs> What yeah. a different time that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's it looks like. This revolting. Is, this is like like everyone's eating this kind of food. Just like white bread with just random assortment of things in there. I guess other people are eating like chili and, and there's an ad for steak. That's what I would think and would be there. Drinking beers. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Everyone drank watery beer all day in the 70s. <laughs> like every diner has a freaking spigot. That's how Chucks pays the bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> These are the moments of like tenseness because a, l- a lot of the tenseness that's happening too is also coming from like, I, I don't know. I don't know if, do you think that if this movie were made today that we wouldn't have the voiceover? That is, I think, the weakest part of this movie is that when he goes into the diner, he goes into the bathroom, suddenly we have a voiceover and it's very, over, it, to me, it sounded very overwritten. It sounded like something that was probably in the short story. But it makes yeah. sense in a short story because you have to have a point of view narrator for that kind of thing. And in yeah. this, it's been so tense because there's very little music. There's almost no dialogue. Um, so when you're suddenly in his head and he has this very flowery way of describing what's going on with his mental state, it, it takes me out of it. But also it kind of feels like, like I don't, I don't need that. Like I no, like I already know what he's thinking. I already know what he's doing. And then also like when he starts doing that, then I, I automatically stop picturing myself being there. What would I do? Hmm. Because now I'm hearing him tell me, so now I'm no longer like imagining what he's thinking. Yeah. It's, it's outdated, but also you're talking about, oh, I know how this guy feels. Part of that is because it's so well directed, we know what he's thinking and what he's feeling. Yeah. 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 Do you think that was a studio note or do you think he pulled it, like you said, from the story just because? Well, Masson wrote it. Um, I'm sure somebody... I don't know. I don't know. There's so much Or maybe there was a silence. little bit and then the studio was like, we want more. Because it, because it happens throughout the whole movie. Like at, at some point you eventually hear him in his head. He's going, like he's talking to his wife in his head. He's like, yeah, you know, like, oh, you know. Uh, so uh, like, like he says, like, I'll never going to see Forbes now. Like, uh, And then he says, like, about his wife, he's like, you know, doing her voice in his head. Like, oh, well, where are you? You're supposed to be home by six. Like he's doing you all mean, this he's in his head. he's talking to himself. Yeah, but yeah. we're not hearing his narration in his head, like yeah. a detective movie. We we do, but that's only when he gets to the diner that does that happen. No, it's happening throughout the movie. He's not saying that out loud to himself. No. Okay. He rarely talks. He only says it when he's talking to people. He's talking, and, but when he's but when he's by himself, he's just thinking. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not necessary. I'm sure that somebody got nervous and wanted to add it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll t- I'll ask Steven next time uh, I'm at the next E3. But it's also the main problem I had with uh, <laughs> um, Masson's script and trilogy of terror, which is when Karen Black is looking for that little doll in her apartment. She's saying stuff like, now, where did you go? Oh, well, I guess I found your spear, at least. Like, there's no (laughs) reason. I see what's happening. She doesn't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So then maybe that's just his style of writing. I think he overwrites a little bit. Um, Finally, yeah, we end up at that odd snakeatorium <laughs> place that we talked <laughs> about. What was and it called? It was called something like Snakes R Us or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think you got it. It, it had it's the another real place. It is? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Are all the snakes dead now? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can still meet the snakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the same snakes of, from Duel. Yeah. 
that that's the real smash him up scene because uh, the guy goes in a phone booth to call the police almost gets run over by the truck and the truck then proceeds to smash and run over everything. <laughs> yeah. And the seat, did you notice when he runs through the phone booth, it's right next to the lizard cage and those lizards are real lizards and they go crazy when that truck barrels <laughs> an inch away from their cage. <laughs> and the poor woman, she's like, yes, why is he doing this? Why is he hurting my snakes? <laughs> Oh no, my snakes! <laughs> uh, eventually, the guy. Oh, remember? The, like, so, yeah, he eventually sees a policeman, mm-hmm. like a police, a police car, and he's like, "Finally, the police!" And he drives up and he pulls next to it, and it's just a black and white car, the pest company with a red bug on yes. top. Yes, yes. I was like, "That's awesome!" It's a good fake out. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, a good fake out is whenever he thinks he's outrun the truck and he goes to sleep and he wakes up with the engine blaring and he realizes he's fallen asleep next to the train tracks and it's the train yeah. going by him. Yeah. Um, then there's more truck shenanigans. Eventually, he. I kept on wondering how is this going to end? Is he going to like be on the train tracks and destroy the truck? I don't know if I loved the way he finally got the better of the truck which is driving up to a cliff jamming his briefcase on the gas pedal jumping out of the mm-hmm. car and then the truck goes over the cliff chasing the car mm-hmm. I don't I don't know I guess I just felt like the truck had been so wily before I didn't figure the truck would fall for that Um, but I, I guess what else yeah, do you, I don't know what else do you do I don't know I, I'll tell you this, like, 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 like I've li- remember at the beginning of this episode, we talked about how flammable, it flammable was. how yeah. flammable this truck was. Yeah. Is there any other, is there, has there any been more blue balls moment in history of this truck with f- going over the cliff yeah. with the words flammable <laughs> right. plastered all over it? Yeah. And it does not catch on fire. There's no explosion. At all. Yeah. There's nothing. It's like the the only thing that blow the only thing that catches on fire is his car. The oh, I was watching going could they not afford it? Did they could they not get the permits? I don't I know. So I mean, that, that truck down. is destroyed. It's not and they when they initially filmed this special, they had one truck. So they had one take to get that crash. Then when they Maybe went back it didn't blow up. Maybe it didn't blow. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, when they went to film the new scenes, they got two trucks and matched them. Yeah. So they could have redone it if they had wanted to. Yeah. I was just. I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. <laughs> I just like. I'm never good at like. You know, like the the thing in movies where what is it called? Where is it a MacGuffin or something? Or, or it's like where you see something. They allude to something like maybe someone closes a drawer and as they're closing the drawer, a gun is inside and then they mm. use that gun later or whatever. Like yes. I'm always bad at catching on those. Like every okay. once in a while I'll see one. This one I was like, okay, you're not getting me this time. I see the word flammable. That's all we see for 50% of this movie. I can't wait till this freaking truck blows up. <laughs> and no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, that did catch me. I mean, I liked being in the truck, seeing the smash, and there's dripping, and it could be yeah. oil, but it also could be blood. Like, we don't see any body in yeah. the truck. And then the movie, the guy... Oh, you do, you do see. Um, the, the truck waves him on a few times. We never so see the is, guy's face. We see his no, hand. No, just his arm. Yeah. Yeah. We we sometimes see his 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 hand and his feet. Yeah. But we never see the guy's face. I'm saying we don't see a body of the, the truck driver at the end. There's no weird yeah. reveal where he's yeah, the yeah, devil like it pulls or out something. And it's his mother or something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then the guy, I appreciate that that Spielberg has the guy celebrating and he looks just like a huge dork doing it. He goes, yeah. oh, 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 and he bounces up and down. And then he kind of 
sits down next to the cliff mm-hmm. and just k- starts chucking pebbles over yep. the side of the cliff. And that's it. That's the end of the movie. And unlike Spielberg now, where he tacks on way too many endings that give you way too many, like everything wrapped up neat with a bow. This is 24 year old Spielberg. So you're just left wondering what it all means. See, I think what's happening is he's sitting there going, I think I'm going to leave my wife. Finally. (laughs) (laughs) That is something I didn't love about this. There's definitely a man up quality to this movie where he's, he's not standing up for his wife's honor and he's, you know, not enough of a man. And during this whole thing, he kind of like yeah. mans up, which is never my favorite <laughs> uh, thing. But I do like how this is way before Jaws, but this is basically just Jaws on the road. Yeah. Is there, uh, yeah, I always see that as the description on you know, reviews of this movie or whatever. Mm. Has he done any other movies that are like, you know, is it like Jaws, but it's dinosaurs or like, what? like he has in a movie where it's Jaws, but it's dinosaurs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's like, called uh, you could say that a, emperor of the sun. <laughs> you could say that about that, but are there a bunch of movies like this? Like this, like Jaws, but it's, um, oh, alien sure. Jaws, but it's, I mean, from him, from him. Oh, from him? Let me yeah. take a look at Spielberg's resume. Like here. Jaws, but it's it's John Belushi in a in a nineteen forty one aircraft. I don't know if there's been anything that one to one, but that's probably on purpose because I know after uh, Jaws, he base he he quote produced Poltergeist, but yeah. he basically directed it. But the reason he didn't want to say he directed it is because he didn't want to get stuck doing horror movies for the rest of his career. So I think yeah. he very pointedly did not want to keep doing these types of movies because he's like, I've done it. Time to do the next thing. Man, Poltergeist is so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just thinking. I'm just yeah. thinking about Poltergeist right now. <laughs> um, do, do you... So after this, he goes to, he does Jaws, or he does Jaws, or no, after this, he does Close Encounters, right? Yeah. Oh, no, no, he does. It's Jaws, then it's Close Encounters. Okay. Then it's 1941. Yeah, that's where he's like, he was asked to direct that, but he felt weird because it was a comedy. Uh... He wasn't sure about it, but he wanted to do something that was lighter. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he, yeah. I'm sure he was just like, oh, I haven't done that yet. I can do anything. Yeah. I'm Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> but then he did Raiders of the Lost Ark and E.T., so he was uh, just fine. Gosh, yeah. Just go through his Wikipedia and take a look. It is like, an. it's like, like I, I, I say overwhelming because like I kept, I just kept getting this, uh, f- overwhelming feeling of being a kid and seeing all of his stuff again. Like, mm. so like every time I'd read a new, I'd be like, oh yeah, he did. Oh yeah, he did. That. Oh, oh, he produced that. I didn't know. He-. And it's like, I'd be like, I was just like, oh my gosh, like he's been such a huge part of my life. <laughs> yeah. And even the stuff that he just produces or executive produce, yes. you can always tell when he's breathed on something because it just, you can, you can tell it has that little swirl on it. Yeah. Like Back to the Future isn't Steven Spielberg, but it definitely feels like it's been touched by him. Yeah, he did. Um, I, I don't know if we'll do this one. I think we should. But he did a, a mini series called Taken, where he like produced it or something, and it was like about alien abduction. I and mm-hmm. I, I used to. Uh, I worked third shift at a hospital, and I would hop up to the waiting rooms to watch it every night that it was on. And I was like, I loved it. And it always it gave me that same feeling. I feel like we should do that for this, but it's, it's a, a massive undertaking, but okay. <laughs> so we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm a fan. This is good. Check it out. Especially if you've never seen it and our, but you like Spielberg, you can get a sense of how he got to where he was. He said that he, he said that he watches this movie at least twice a year to remember what he did. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's how much he 
you know, uh, that's how much we that's how much the film world is influenced by him that even he's looking at his old stuff to remember how to make his new stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can finally make the terminal. I've watched Duel again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh thanks again for tuning in once again. This was episode number 25 what is, what is that in like is that golden or is that 50 that's 50 right is there a number for 25 or a name no <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure is there a <laughs> is there a precious metal yeah What's you know 20... like when you say your golden anniversary is like 50 years sure. or something let's see okay is so the 20th sil- it is silver the silver anniversary silver? Yes, it is. Yeah, so this is our silver episode, number 25, Duel. It'll also be released on September 11th. So, you know, while you're watching this, just just try to remember those that died on that tragedy. And the good thing is, is that because that truck doesn't blow up, there won't be an uncomfortable moment for you <laughs> That's right, where you make an eagle cry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, thanks again. Like and subscribe on iTunes. Write a review. Or on Apple Podcasts, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like doing a, a, an advertisement for the 2000s era of podcasts. But uh, yeah, Apple Podcasts, um, go to YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to our channel. And uh, NetworkSpecialPodcast.com, all the good stuff is there. Thank you once again. And have a good, safe day. Kaboom!